Our scripture today is from the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under a bushel basket, but on a lampstand, and, gives, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. May these words be our light and our life. Amen. Before I begin, let us pray. God of Epiphanies, we long to hear your holy word in fresh ways. Open our ears to the call of your voice. Open our eyes to the dawning of a new day. Fill us with anticipation for your future. Amen. We continue this week with Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Jesus' blessings, if you will. Today, Jesus pronounces blessings upon his hearers, again declaring that we are salt and light. Salt and light. And before we go any farther, we need to clarify something. Because we are, as my professor David Lowe says, faced with the insidious temptation to hear Jesus' words as requirement rather than blessing, as command rather than commissioning. We have the temptation to hear the words salt and light as something to add to our already full lists, something else to do rather than an affirmation of who we are. And we need to be explicit here because Jesus doesn't say, if you want to become salt and light, do this. Or, before I'll call you salt and light, I need to see this from you. It is not conditional. No, in Capernaum, overlooking the waves of the Sea of Galilee with the sea breeze blowing, maybe through their hair on their necks, sitting atop a hill with his disciples, Jesus says what he means. He blesses people. You are the salt of the earth. Or to use Eugene Peterson's translation, you are the salt seasoning that brings out the God flavors of this earth. You are the light of the world. You are here to bring out the God colors in the world. This is not language of burden. It is language of affirmation. Language of blessing. Language of trust. But how can Jesus' words be blessing and trust when right after he says you are the salt of the earth, he follows with, If salt has lost its taste, how can saltiness be restored? And no one lights a lamp and puts it under a bushel basket. Let's think about that for a moment. Have you ever had salt that isn't salty? I mean, if anything, doesn't it just dissolve? And wouldn't a bushel basket over a candle just snuff out the flame? Upon first hearing, it sounds like Jesus is implying that one can lose one's nature as salt and light. But perhaps he's actually pointing to the absurdity of the possibility of losing one's nature. Perhaps he's trying to point out that we are who we are in the same way that salt is salt and light is always light. Dependable strong, God's good creations. 
Now let's delve into the metaphors for a moment. What did salt and light mean to Jesus' hearers thousands of years ago? Light meant a lot to people living in an ancient, pre-electricity world. It became a symbol of hope for them. Salt was used to flavor and preserve food, much like we do today, but it was not only for daily use. Salt was used to rub on newborn children, to seal covenants, to sprinkle on sacrifices for ritual. Salt and light are two things that in the ancient world were essential for life, everyday life, but it's no wonder that symbolically they also became meaningful for life. Both were connected to God's gracious activity in the world. And there's something else about salt and light to remember as well. Have you ever noticed that they only act in relationship to something else? Light, for example, illuminates all that it reaches. Salt enhances the flavor of food and preserves it, cleans, even aids in healing. My point is that Jesus' metaphors are no accident. Salt and light are what they are in relation to something else. Our identity as salt and light is not an individual identity. It is an identity created in community. Lest we think that it is about ourselves, about our own moral uprightness, our ability to manage and control our lives, or an ability to win the race and succeed, Our identity as salt and light is something that involves who we are in community with the rest of creation. Jesus' words to us today are a gift of identity in a world that competes to brand us, to classify us, to tell us that we are not okay, that we are only of value according to what we produce or purchase, what we do, or what we buy. Jesus isn't trying to weigh us down with his words. He's naming a different reality, a different perspective, bestowing a blessing. Jesus is naming people for who they are, God's good creations. Now you may have heard the psychological statistics about children's self-esteem in relation to the messages they receive. Actually, after the first service, I have to admit that apparently my, my data is dated. So I stand corrected. However, psychologists used to suggest that for every one negative message elementary school age children hear about themselves, they need to hear ten positive ones to restore their sense of self-esteem to where it had been previously. While this is, or perhaps was, important for children in their formative years, I would argue that it's nearly as meaningful for the rest of us, no matter the age. Last year, the 7th through 12th graders taught me something about this in youth fellowship. It is something we still do. When someone feels hurt by something someone else has said, We do the circle of affirmation. I I was checking to see if I had any rolled eyes. Where everyone there says something uh, nice about a person who feels put down. It's one of those funny things, done in a totally tongue-in-cheek way, but it makes a difference somehow after we do it to the person who feels hurt, and I think to the entire atmosphere of the group. I suspect that it works and that we still do it, even though we may roll our eyes or laugh a little bit. I suspect that we are reminded that we are all of worth and that God's light has just, maybe for a moment, shone in that moment. 
And in the same way that the youth affirm one another in the circle of affirmation with words like, so-and-so is creative, so-and-so is a great writer, so-and-so isn't afraid to try new things. In the same way that the youth do that with one another, Jesus is affirming us as salt and light. And you know, I suspect culturally we have a hard time seeing ourselves this way, as good, worthy, lovable, outside of the things that we do. It makes sense when we live in a world fraught with suffering, violence, and injustice. When I stand up here saying that Jesus calls us to be salt and light because that's what we are, many of us in the room may nod politely and say, hmm, yes, salt and light. Thanks, preacher. And ministers, well, they're just nice people paid to say nice things, right? It is hard to believe that we are good, worthy, and lovable. But that is precisely what Jesus is trying to help us see. Blessing us as salt and light. Not because of what we do or produce or buy, but because God has made us God's people. And God's blessings are as much a part of God's people as saltiness is a part of salt. God's blessings are as much a part of God's people as illumination is a part of God's light. Being salt and light is about being in relationship. You will be salt and light for people in ways that you know and in ways that you don't know. In the most ordinary and mundane parts of your life, you will be and are a blessing to others. Because it's hard for us to believe, I challenge you to look for it in your life. To see if you have a moment where you feel like someone else, and I dare say even you, are salt and light. Where you see God in the world. Society may train us to look for God in the most extraordinary parts of life. Those things are also true and good. But I invite you to try a change in perspective to look for salt and light, to look for where God may be in the ordinary, mundane parts of life. You are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Where have you seen something or someone that has lit up the world? You are salt and light. Someone or something has lit up the world. It's there. It will continue to be so. Amen.